In this video, we're going to discuss how to create a spline cage based on our image planes that we created uh, in our viewport. And uh, out of these splines, uh, the idea will be that we're going to be creating uh, nerve surfaces. And again, let me just kind of give you an example of what we're going for here. <coughs> uh, by using uh, lofting, like this and also boundary <coughs> to create smooth and um, nice surfaces like this that we can cut we can uh, we can use for uh, the surfaces of our car um, so let's begin I'm just gonna go ahead and go back to a file that only has my <coughs> my image planes and I'm gonna begin by making sure that these image planes are not something that I'm gonna be accidentally selecting when I'm working so I wanna go ahead and create a layer for them so the image planes save that alright and I can just go ahead and freeze them so I don't I don't, I don't accidentally select that they can just be right there um so this process <coughs> it's a little bit of following along what you see in your um in your schematic in your blueprint but also being able to go into your reference and kind of having an understanding of what's happening in your model um cuz again we're going to be drawing uh the curvature uh based on what we're seeing um, and another thing that we need to keep in mind is where exactly some of these uh, curvatures kind of break out. Um, uh, and again, we need to kind of keep that into account to make sure that we're drawing the right curves and stuff like that. Um, so again, having a lot of reference, it's key to be able to do this successfully. So uh, let's begin. Uh, and usually the hardest part is kind of... Uh, knowing where to start. Uh, basically, you want to start with the, the most basic shapes, which is usually kind of like this rim area over here. So you can just kind of use um, a circle for this. <coughs> Again, I'm going to close this. And I'm just going to go ahead and make it match. It's a little bit too big here. seen here and again we're not this is not gonna match perfectly at this point uh, especially because at, uh, at some point over here the curvature just kind of stops and goes straight down so we need to kind of make sure that um, this curve is kind of doing the same so to do to break this and change it so it's like what's going on with this curve I'm gonna right click <coughs> and go into my curve points and I'm just going to add points in my circle and uh, basically what I'm doing is with these circles with this uh, points I'm kind of marking where I want to break this spline uh, and again I'm going to go to my other curves over here <coughs> and I'm going to go ahead and detach curves so notice by setting two different points uh, here uh, I was able to mark the areas where I wanted uh, this to break and now this piece that I don't need at the bottom it's separate from the circle and I can go in here and just modify this vertex to make sure it um, it fits what what's supposed to be doing over here and again I'm gonna need to move some of these points um, to make it match a little bit better Looks like I got soft selection on. Alright. And 
And same with the other side. Again, I just want to make sure that I'm following the contour best I can. <clears throat> and again, I'm noticing now that there is another kind of rim around it that's pretty much the same curvature, but it's a little bigger. So I can just make a duplicate of this and scale it up. Like that. And then adjust if I need to. Alright, something along these lines, and then I know for sure that I'm going to need something similar on the other side, so I can definitely just take these two and just duplicate them. Move them over. <coughs> just kind of make it match. And again, it's going to be a little bit different. But I can definitely kind of change them to make sure it fits what I'm supposed to do here. And uh, I can just maybe create more points here and just cut off what I don't need so curve point here and here and again I'm doing this by right clicking on the curve selecting curve point and then drawing these points along the curve where I want them to stop and to do more than one point I'm holding shift and then I'm going to edit curves and just detaching and that's basically taking these extra uh, spl uh, spline parts that I don't need <coughs> and I'm gonna do something similar over here Again, right click, curve point. When I put one here, hold shift, go to the other side, mark another one there, detach, and then just go in here and just get rid of these little pieces that I don't need. Alright, <coughs> so um, now I'm going to be using my uh, Bezier curve tool to kind of draw out some of these main kind of shapes um, <coughs> that define the curvature of the car. And and again, it's it's uh, you need, you need to kind of go in there into your reference and just kind of analyze what's going on there, and and then figure out how how you're going to break it into pieces. So we know we're going to be drawing this part and uh, this line that goes here. Uh, you know, we can definitely start kind of drawing some of these shapes. <coughs> and, uh, okay, let's start doing that. <coughs> so, again, that's your curve tool or whatever curve uh, tool that you're most comfortable with. <coughs> and I'm just going to start drawing it out. And, again, our first pass doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to lay out curve here and here and I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this curve all the way down here um, you know this this is not supposed to represent the detail that's here but I know I'm gonna need a surface to be able to do that detail later on uh, perhaps by converting some of my surfaces and uh, by converting my surface into polygon and then doing detail on them but I need to account for that space somehow so definitely building some sort of curve uh, surface there is going to uh, be able to do that and again I'm going to go and just uh, control vertex here and I'm going to start modifying my curves a little bit just making sure um, they're following along my reference uh, the best that I can. I 
again with the Vesier curves I just want to make sure that I'm selecting the vertex point and not the Vesier otherwise it's going to deform my curve and you know this is one of those, those cases also where my curve is going to need a little bit more resolution in order for us to successfully have uh, the curve that we need so I can definitely take an opportunity of this uh, at this point and just start adding a little bit more resolution and again I just insert on a point and then I'm going to my edit curves and I want to insert a knot I want to go back in here and as you can tell there is a new uh, Vesier point that I can manipulate make sure that it's following the shape um, Then I can definitely add another um, maybe curve point, uh, another point over here. So right clicking curve point, maybe right here in the middle. Uh, we want to uh, insert a knot. Right click again, control vertex, and gonna change this handle a little bit. Maybe bring it a little bit down. Um, and yeah, perhaps that's a little bit too much. I just want a little bit of a curvature going there. Because um, <coughs> I am going to have a couple more curves that are going to define what this front part's going to look like. Um, Alright, I'm just going to keep this maybe part separate for now. Alright, so <coughs> that was our first uh, curve, and we're going to keep drawing more curves uh, in order to define the shape of this car. So let me just kind of keep drawing a couple bit, a couple more. Um, let's see, let's start with the one that's like right next to it. Right there. Again, at this one I'm just kind of making. I'm not concerned about this detail just yet. I want to have. Uh, I'm going to need a surface around this area that kind of um, accounts for that space. <coughs> but I'm not concerned about the, the details yet. It's more about accounting for uh, what's, what I'm going to be using to create this detail. And uh, it looks like I might have made a little bit of a mess here. So I'm just going to delete one of these. <coughs> Again, I just selected that vertex and just um, hit delete and it deleted it. Uh, doesn't seem like I need more resolution on this one so I can just leave it as is. <coughs> Alright. And um, let's see. And I can definitely start drawing out the curve that's going to define basically the top of the car as well which is basically what these two are doing are just kind of defining what this this part over here is going to be so I want to start defining what this is going to be and these parts over here um, so again <coughs> Bezier curve tool or whatever curve tool um, it's more uh, comfortable for you And again, the amount of resolution that you add initially is completely arbitrary. We can always go back and add more. Um, because some of the uh, uh, drawings that we're doing might not take care of uh, every single aspect of it. And again, uh, one thing that I'm doing that I thought that I was going to do was to draw this whole shape. But this is actually parts that are kind of separate. Cause we have the windshield here and a windshield here and then this is the, the hood of the car. 
So I'm actually just stop this one right here, <coughs> and uh, I'm gonna go into my control vertex here. I'm actually get rid of this last point, so it starts from here, and again, I wanna be careful not to select my handles, but to select my actual vertex here. <coughs> here and just kind of manipulate this a little bit um, again I might need to bring uh, ins insert more points and add a little more resolution to get the right curvature here so I just inserted um, I'm going to insert a knot there okay and again, this is going to start defining what's going on on top. But again, keep it in mind that this this right here is pretty much going to be a separate piece. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and draw out another. Uh, what's going on here? Okay. Another spline that's going to take care of what's going on in the front. And again, I don't want to be too concerned about uh, whether it's covering the amount of area that I need to because I can always go back and edit it out. <coughs> uh, make it do what I need it to do. Alright. I'm not concerned about this line over here just yet because this is something that I'm going to most likely take care of when I'm in uh, working for my front viewport. I'm mostly trying to take care of what I can see, uh, what I can define from my side. Um, but this is a detail that you would see from the front and not necessarily from the side. Um, see, and more curvature here. and let's see what more detail and again there's a couple of details that I'm gonna have to kinda uh, maybe draw from the side and maybe start manipulating from the front and top just like this because um, it goes from here all the way to the front uh, but I can also maybe start drawing some of this detail over here <coughs> so let's go ahead and do that drawing some of these lines that are gonna start breaking this into different pieces and my file just crashed so I'm gonna pause this for a second alright apologies about that I'm, uh, I just found my uh, the file that crashed so just a reminder that you should be always uh, saving uh, constantly saving your progress otherwise you might lose it um, so again uh, I believe we're in not this curve. I think we're about to draw this one over here. <coughs> so, I want to make sure to get out of this. Get out of it. Jeez. Alright. <coughs> so, there's um, your curve tool. And again, I'm going to be drawing this curve over here. And again, how many points you draw is completely arbitrary. Um, you can always come back and uh, <coughs> add as, ma as much uh, as many points as you need. <coughs> Another thing that I'm going to start doing now also is start snap. Uh, uh, make sure that I'm snapping my curves to all the ones that are supposed to be um, connected to. And again, that's going to make it easier for me later on, um, uh, especially when it comes to boundary. Um, uh, and by I mean by boundary, I mean the. Um, 
the surface tool that we'll be using to construct some of our surfaces uh, for this car. And again, I'm just moving this around. I'm using the C tool uh, for as my shortcut for snapping. So I click on C, and as you can see, snapping along my spline. So the letter C. And uh, okay, <coughs> so we got this curve going on. We got this. Um, I could draw in this one and this one over here as well. Um, and this right here kind of represents what's going on here so I could definitely add that in as well <coughs> so um, this and uh, I want to use my my curve tool to draw this in and uh, let's use it again to draw this bar right here and again this one's one that might need a little bit more resolution here to get the right curvature so um, we're gonna use the insert knot here. Okay. <coughs> All right. So we got this. Uh, this line is supposed to represent the seat inside, which I'm not going to be concerned with at this point. Uh, so let's draw the, I guess, the, the window kind of detail over here. <coughs> and we're going to have to kind of go in here and maybe draw some things for the back as well. Because just like the front, we need, we're going to need a surface that defines this area, even if we don't do anything f uh, about the detail at this point <coughs> need to account for what's going to happen back there um, uh, so let's start from here I'm going to finish it somewhere over here and again go to my curve points and uh, just go in here and just modify this a little bit And then I want to draw another one that defines this area right here. Again, we're looking at not necessarily this black um, kind of rubber area that it has right here, but uh, we're looking at the, the body of the car, actually. So we want to make sure we draw the outside line for it. <coughs> Again. 
And yeah, this is one that we're going to have to go in here and kind of fix a um, couple things that didn't turn out right while I was drawing it. So let's just go in here. And it's just a matter of adjusting our handles. So we got this line defines this, that, this one defines this one. <coughs> we have one that defines the front and here. Um, okay, so let's let's just draw in a couple more that are just gonna define what's going on in the back. And then uh, we'll proceed from there. So <coughs> Let's just go here. Okay, that should do. Let's just do it one more time. There. And uh, let's throw in a couple of a couple of these lines over here. So this one goes up to this line over here. Again, I'm trying to define not necessarily the detail that uh, that I will have to model from the front, but rather the side detail. So this line and this detail going on over here. I still want to go in here and maybe fix my curves a little bit. Alright. And uh, I'm going to need another line that just kind of defines this part back here. <coughs> And um, again, I don't want to be too concerned with what's going on here, but rather with the contour, the, the the shape that defines the back of it. So that's what I'm going to draw. <coughs> and let's just go ahead and draw it in. Maybe add a couple more points here to help me um, throw this shape a little bit better. <coughs> And if you ever want to make your uh, Vessier curves a little bit sharper, all you got to do is kind of 
make sure the handles are closer to the vertex origin point and that will make it uh, a sharper point than they would usually be um, I think this is this is gonna work just for now okay so <coughs> Alright, so as I believe we have uh, the main definition that we need for the side of it. But one, need to, one thing that we need to uh, understand right now is that everything that we just did is basically uh, tracing uh, what we see from the side viewport. But now we got to begin to move these uh, splines into the right position and to manipulate them to the uh, from the other viewports to make sure that they're following the correct shapes from uh, also the front and the top so I'm gonna start doing that in the next video